on everybody out there in Entre Land? It's Ken Colwood from ClickFix.io coming back with another Freebie Friday. And in this edition, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the pushes for more dynamic content, but not the dynamic CMS that's coming in another video. Nope. Today, we're going to talk more about how to personalize the user experience on the front end on your landing pages by using both the built-in Entreport features as well as some quick click fix enhancements that you might be interested in. So let's take a look at the built-in features first. Uh, back in 2020, Entreport started pushing towards more of the ability to give you options when it comes to personalizations and making the content on the pages a little bit more dynamic. And they did this by allowing you to go to a block and select some of the display settings. Right. Besides the device that you could display blocks on, uh, when it can be displayed, whether that's immediately or after a certain amount of time on the page, um, you gave you option to display it to everyone, only people that weren't that you didn't know, only people that you did know, some people based on criteria, people who were logged in, and people who uh, were logged in based on certain criteria. Then they added another little feature that allowed for you to be able to parse the URL, so that's the address that you have in the bar at the top, and look for specific parameters to decide whether or not it should show a block on a page. So if we take a look at that, I've set up two conditions, and we're going to show this block if the page URL contains a mount somewhere, or if it contains utm underscore campaign equals query, right? And what that looks like is something to this effect where we have utm underscore equals query. And if I go ahead and refresh this page, this entire block does actually show up. All right, so you can see the whole block is showing up here and nothing else, all right? And if we go back to our editor, we can see that that whole block is there and we have a separate block that because of its conditions um, is not set to show up, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the second block. So instead of looking for a campaign that contains the word query, we are looking for one that contains the word contains. All right, so if I go back to the page and I change this from query to contains, let's see what happens. All right, so we can see that this entire block now shows up and the other block has disappeared. All right, so those are kind of the built-in options, and those are very useful for a number of situations where you're able to, you don't have very many blocks on a page, maybe it's just a quick opt-in page or a landing page that's very short, and you, all you need to do is set up specific blocks to show content based on device uh, or based on other criteria like what's in the URL string. Here, let's say that, for example, I wanted to um, have this set up where I have um, only Meta or only Google showing up, well, I would have to separate the contents of this block into uh, two or three different blocks depending on how I wanted things to display. <clears throat> I would have to set up something like one block that had just type equals contains, which would always show. And then I'd have another block that shows exclusive offer for our Facebook friends and the Meta logo. And then I'd have another block that shows um, the Google message and then I would just set the conditions, right? So this block would be by itself. It would have no conditions. It would always show. And then I would set something up where instead of UTM campaign, maybe I would use UTM term or some other parameter or UTM source is actually probably a better example uh, for this. UTM source is Facebook. So then show the Facebook message or UTM source is Google or YouTube um, and then show the Google message, right? Now that's all fine and good, and it makes a lot of sense for short pages uh, where you only want to do some uh, broad customization or if you want to just set up blocks that are uh, mobile specific or, or something like that because of, of how the layout works. Um, that's, that's a fine solution for uh, many use cases. But what happens when you don't want to create a lot of extra blocks because as we know that slows things down for the system but rather you would like to be able to control individual elements within a block. Well, that's where ClickFix comes in with the if URL shortcode. 
So here we have uh, some gobbledygook uh, for most people, but these are the short codes that we've set up to uh, kind of illustrate the different use cases that you can do if you're actually trying to use the URL string to personalize the information on the front end. Uh, but you want to be able to control individual elements, images, videos, whatever, uh, based on that information. So let's go ahead and just publish this. And we're going to come back to our page here, but we're going to do something different. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a query string of amount equals 799. So you can see that I didn't set it up to hide the second block, but I just made it so that you wouldn't see uh, the rest of the content, but both blocks are here. But of course, we can always set things up to show and hide however we want. So we could show only the query block or only the contains block. But for the sake of example, we're just going to keep it simple. So in this case, uh, let's imagine that you, this is the thank you page after somebody has taken in a multiple choice exam or something like that, right? Um, the certification exam is coming up uh, at the point of this uh, recording. Uh, so for example, maybe if you wanted to show an instant result and you were able to calculate the score right away, um, you would pass that information in a form and one of the uh, URL parameters would be the amount or the score. And in this case, it, the score is, or the amount is 799. And so uh, the message comes through, I'm sorry, it looks like you need to take retake the exam. But what happens if I go to, let's say that the cutoff here is 800, right? So if you get 800 or better, then you pass the exam. Well, if that query parameter gets passed, well, actually, congratulations, you passed your exam. And you can see that we have the ability uh, within the code, we can have the ability to use things like greater than or greater than or equal to or less than. So that way we can have the system, so we can have ClickFix actually parse the information and display uh, the chosen elements based on uh, a math calculation, basically, all right? So if I do, if I got a 900, it should still show that I passed. But if I got, you know, a 600, then it looks like I need to retake the exam, right? So that's, that's one way we could use something like this. But what about something a little bit more marketing related, right? You can imagine that if you're using UTM codes uh, in your marketing uh, links, which you should be, you can actually change the information or the elements that are shown on the page based on the parameters that you include in the link. So in this case, let's say that we are doing content for females that are between 20 and 30. Well, we're going to show some information over here based on that avatar, and we're gonna show a person's picture who kind of fits that avatar, right? Because we know from marketing research that when the information is, that is given to somebody during a marketing presentation closely matches their profile, right? Birds of a feather flock together, uh, they tend to convert higher, right? So let's say that instead of you know, I'm running the same face, I'm running a Facebook ads, right? And I'm sending everybody to the same landing page, but I'm using these UTM parameters to change up the actual uh, messaging that they're seeing, right? So let's say that it was a male between 50 and 60 instead of a female between 20 and 30. What happens then? Well, it's the same product, right? But now we have a male that more closely matches this uh, 50 to 60 demographic, and we also call them out uh, over here with the message, right? And when you go back to the editor, you'll remember that all I did was I just had a bunch of different images, right? And these are all uh, fake people uh, from one of those AI uh, image generators, right? I just have a bunch of people who kind of fit this, you know, female 20 to 30, male 20 to 30, right? 40 to 50, 50, oh no, sorry, uh, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, right? And so I have these different things set up, these images, and then I just have these different 
subheadlines, right? Women in their 20s, men in their 20s, women in 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Uh, you get the you get the picture, right? And then this one is static. It's always the same. And the actual product, quote unquote product that we're selling is always the same as well. But I just let the system go ahead and determine which image and which message should be displayed. So, all right. So let's say that it's a female 40 to 50. And it shows an avatar that kind of fits that mold and calls out women in their 40s and shows the product. All right. So you can see how that could be useful. Now, that's for the query string. And a query string is simply anything that comes after this question mark in the, in the URL. This first part, the UTM underscore content equals, that's called a query string. And what we're doing is we're telling the system that the short code, that if we are uh, parsing the content query string, if it says female, then do something. If it says 40 to 50, then do something else. And with our short codes, what we've done is we've kind of combined those, right? Because we want this to be, uh, because we have two separate things happening, we want to match up not just the image, but also the messaging. Well, we want to make sure that we are using and. So both of these things have to be true. And if they are true, then show this picture, which is 11, and then this um, headline, which is one of these headlines here. In this case, it'd be women in their 20s. All right, so show the picture of the woman in her 20s along with the, the uh, title women in their 20s um, as long as it is a female for the content and the term is 20 to 30, right? If you look in our documentation, you'll see that we can get really complex with this. We can do and or statements. We can do nested statements. There are a whole bunch of things that you can do to make sure that this is hyper personalized depending on how you are passing the information to the, the page, right? So if you're sending something via email and you're using UTM parameters or any parameter you want to make up and you're pulling data from the contact record, well, you can make this as hyper personalized as you'd like. Right. In fact, you could even set it up if you are uh, somehow collecting the uh, pictures the, of your members, you could even pull in that information and show their picture uh, on the web page um, based on the UTMs that you pass. Uh, you could do the same thing by just using merge fields, of course, but um, you could see how this could be used in marketing as long as you're able to push that information to a dynamic front end page where they don't actually have to be, even be logged in to be able to see their picture, you know, maybe coupled with your logo or something like that. So you can always use the same exact landing page without having to uh, worry about making a specific one for each person and worrying about PURLs and things like that. Now, the dynamic CMS is going to solve uh, a lot of these kind of personalization issues, uh, but there's still going to be some cases where you're going to want to be able to do things based on the URL, just like we mentioned before, when it's potentially coming from an ad platform, right? Because you're not going to have the information to pull from the dynamic CMS in, in that case. Right? So that's the URL. Uh, that's if URL type equals query, right? It's going to look for the URM, the URL parameter that is UTM underscore content. It's going to check to see that it matches, in this case, male. And then it's going to check and see if there's a UTM underscore term. And it's going to check to see if it matches between 20 and 30. If both of those things are true, it's going to show this picture of the 20 to 30 year old male. And it's going to show this headline that calls out the men in their 20s. All right. But we also have in that same short code, we have a different type. And that type is contains. Right, so let's take a look at a contains example. So imagine, if you will, just like we brought up at the very beginning of this video, if you had a desire to only show either the meta message or the Google message based on where something came from, um, using the built-in stuff, you would have to make basically three blocks. One block to have the headline, one block to have the uh, user specific content and then another block for that other user. If we had more logos or more different ad platforms we were using, we'd have to replicate that uh, 
to match however many platforms we were using uh, with different blocks, or we'd have to make separate pages for each of these visitors, right? But instead of that, what we've done is we've said, okay, if the URL contains FB click ID in this case, uh, then go ahead and show the meta message, right? And the reason for the FB click ID is because any click that comes from Facebook is going to have this FB click ID appended to it, right? So we know for a fact that this is a Facebook visitor, right? This is whether or not you're using UTMs or, or anything like that. This is something that is, let's call it infallible almost, right? And by the same token, if we have a G click ID, right? We know that it's going to be something that's coming from Google, right? And so we show just the Google messaging, right? Now, I'm not going to get too deep into the nitty gritty of um, how to set all of this up uh, to replicate this exact example. Uh, we have the, the docs for that and, and they're pretty clear. Um, but you can see that it's very, it's very much a short code that you type out the if URL, you determine the type. So in this case, it's type equals contains. And then we say, okay, what are we looking for, all right? Then after we open the short code, we go ahead and tell the short code what we want it to do. In this case, we want it to show element six and seven in that block. And then we go ahead and close the short code. If I wanted to, I could also make sure that it hides the other elements. I can make sure that it does any number of, uh, of things by using additional short codes between the open and the closing tag, all right? And it's the same kind of logic, right? If URL type contains G click ID, in this case, then show element eight and nine, which are the, uh, the Google message and the Google logo, right? Up here where it's query, what we're doing is we're saying if URL type equals query, then we go ahead and define the parameter, right? Which query parameter are we looking for? We're defining uh, whether or not it has to equal, so is or equals mail. And then in this case, we want to also check for a secondary parameter. And that one is UTM term. And then we define what that term needs to match in order for the short code to go ahead and execute what is in between the two tags. For the full documentation, just go ahead and visit doc.clickfix.io and type in if URL here in the search and you'll come down here and you'll have an explanation of exactly how this works as well as some of the different operators and values that you can use in order to build out simple or complex arguments in order to be able to personalize things to your heart's content. And as always, if you have any questions about how to use these free short codes, or if we have any kind of solutions that are going to fit into your business and help you with your bottom line, please don't hesitate to drop a comment below this video and let us know and we'll get you sorted as soon as possible.